Hey there, and welcome back to RimWorld. My name is Pete, and today we complete another episode of our RimWorld Ice Sheet Survival Series. In the previous episode, Cambia survived quite a few troubles out on the Ice Sheet. He got hit with not one but two Mechanite infections, and he also had to defend against a huge tribal raid. On the positive side, though, the colony once again gave birth to two new huskies, and as promised, we are going to name those after you. The first husky puppy here is a male one, and it will get renamed to Mikael after patron Mikael Helquist. Congratulations, and of course, thank you for your pledge, Mikael. For the female puppy, then, naming rights go to the user Watchful Native, who was randomly selected from all the comments on the last episode and suggested the name Lucky. And with that, the husky population is now up to 5, while Cambia himself is already busy again at the research bench, where we continue with the research for hydroponics. However, for the next few moments, research will take a bit of a backseat. I have decided, after many long hours of thinking about it, that we are in fact going to start cooking. And because we are going to cook with human meat exclusively, at least for Cambia, I have installed a small mod, the Cook Cannibal Meal mod. My goal is of course to stay as vanilla as possible in this playthrough, but the mod fixes a very important problem for cannibal colonies, and it does so by separating all meals into two categories. The first one is the standard meal that can be cooked with any and all ingredients, the other one is the cannibal meal that can only be cooked with human meat. With this mod installed, we can now manage our meal distribution a bit better, as we can send the cannibal meals to Cambia's private little stockpile, while the meals made from other ingredients can go up to the huskies. This separation would not have been possible without the mod, and so there would have been a large chance of the huskies eating meals made from human meat, and of course vice versa, Cambia eating meals made from animal ingredients. So this separation based on ingredients definitely a function that I would like to see in the final 1.0 release, which by the way seems to be getting closer. The unstable version of the 1.0 release is already available. I haven't played it myself though, I didn't want to screw up the safe game here. But if any of you guys have already been able to get a look at it, then of course feel free to share your experiences in the comments. Maybe also a quick word about the reason behind the cooking. The big factor here is of course efficiency. Turning meat into simple meals increases their nutritional value by 80%, which of course means our limited supplies will last us longer. Admittedly, the simple meal then is not the most efficient way to eat, as it restores a fixed amount of 0.9 nutrition, which is most of the time a bit more than colonists or animals actually need. It seems though like we have much bigger problems to worry about. Yes, another mechanoid raid is on its way, three heavily armored centipedes, and you cannot see it on screen right now, a scyther has also rushed ahead. So far we have only been able to defeat two centipedes on their own, so let's see how this one goes. This by the way is an excellent chance to test out the mortar, which we will have to man with Cambia and we will also set it to hold fire, otherwise it will fire automatically and will not always pick the best target. With the mortar we will then set a manual target slightly ahead of the centipedes. The accuracy of the mortar is of course pretty horrible, but it also has a pretty large area of effect, so the chances of landing a hit on a larger, slower group of enemies here are not that terrible. As the mortar comes flying in though, it sadly lands just shy of the first centipede, so our attackers, at least for the time being, remain unharmed. Now in the lower left corner you can see the mortar has a pretty slow cooldown. It takes a full 28 seconds for the mortar to be able to fire again. Thankfully though, in this case, our enemies are just ridiculously slow. And here we go, the second mortar shell is flying in and this one is a hit. As we can see, it only caught one centipede, but it did a solid amount of damage. I also think we have time for one more round, so let's once again set a target just ahead of the centipedes and then hope the shot connects. Alright, this one just went wide and crashed into the mountain, but one hit out of three attempts is definitely not that bad. Back inside of the base we now send Cambia off to bed for a few minutes of rest, while the lone scyther is slowly approaching our traps. And just one single trap kills it instantly, and so we are going to rearm that trap immediately. I am more than sure we will need it against the centipedes. With the Scyther Corps stored away, we will also switch weapons now. Cambia will now equip his charge rifle because that packs a bit more of a punch compared to the assault rifle. And he is also taking a few EMP grenades with him. For those, I have created a small stockpile near where Cambia will stand and fire, so we can quickly switch weapons without having to run back and forth. One final thing then, before we're ready for combat, of course we need to flick the switches and turn on the turrets. And once that has happened, we can actually send Cambia out. 
One single centipede here seems to have a slightly higher movement speed than the rest, which should allow us to land a few shots on it with the charge rifle before it actually enters our defenses. This could save us precious traps, maybe it's even enough to keep this one out of the base entirely, which would then make work a lot easier for our turrets. The centipede here, by the way, is equipped with the Inferno Cannon. It sounds pretty deadly, but in a one-on-one -on -one fight it's not that bad. It is fairly inaccurate unless it's used over close range, and even if it hits, the damage is not that bad. The biggest risk is really the burn damage, but out on the ice sheet, things generally don't tend to burn that long. So, Cambia has now successfully landed a few hits and he has also avoided being hit on his own, so I think it's now time to retreat back into the base and prepare for the assault. Mostly thanks to the EMP grenades, I am cautiously optimistic at this point, but for the moment let's wait and see whether or not the first centipede actually makes it inside. Alright, lovely, centipede down, we lost a few traps here, but at least we now have one less enemy to worry about. One of the remaining two is also already injured from the mortar, so at least for the moment things are going quite well for us. One thing I completely forgot, of course we need a roof over the stockpile, otherwise the weapons underneath will deteriorate. Later on we'll simply build a shelf, but we have no time for that at the moment. Now I quickly switched back and forth between EMP grenades and charge rifle, but then I saw the weapons the centipedes had equipped, and I decided to once again head out in an attempt to land a few pot shots. The centipedes are firing with heavy charge blasters here. Now on a hit those do a bit more damage than the inferno cannon, but they are also once again highly inaccurate. They also have a pretty long cooldown and that might be our biggest advantage here, because once we get an enemy to fire we can immediately head into cover, and once the fire has stopped the long cooldown will then prevent it from firing again immediately. Our charge rifle of course has a much quicker cooldown, so we can fire back after just a few seconds, while the enemy can do absolutely nothing about it. Eventually though, with two enemies approaching, the situation got a bit too risky for my taste, and so we are now retreating back into the base for good, where we will very likely soon discover the magic of EMP grenades. Now the centipedes are on their way into the base, and with a lot of the traps already taken out, they are almost guaranteed to make it in. And that is exactly the point where the EMP grenades come into play. EMP grenades are more or less the perfect weapon against mechanoid targets, because they have the ability to stun them for a short time. Now I had a small mistake in my strategy here, and that was continuing to throw grenades even after the enemy was stunned. That increases the chance of the enemy becoming what is called adapted. Basically the centipede gains a short term stun immunity. Ideally what you want to do is to throw the grenade once at an enemy, hope it stuns and then hold your fire until the stun wears off. The enemy still has a chance to become adapted regardless, but it is slightly smaller. After both enemies have been stunned for a moment, we are also switching back to the charge rifle, because the centipede's positioning in this fight is admittedly a bit of a problem. As you can see, only two of our three turrets are actually able to fire at the centipedes, because neither one of them is actually bothering to move further into the base. This leaves Cambia with the need to supply support fire, while the centipedes, at least for the moment, seem to be holding their own. Our defenses meanwhile are taking quite a bit of punishment, we already lost one piece of wall and I am afraid we're going to lose a few more. At this point however it does pay off that we have built plus two turrets, our turrets are already pretty hard to hit as they are right now, and their high amount of hit points will likely allow them to survive the fight. Now at this point we are also switching back to the EMP grenades, the stun immunity should have worn off by now. As you can also see here, the grenades are not the most accurate weapon, especially not since we're throwing them across a field of stone chunks. Now skipping ahead a few seconds we have our first success of the fight. The second of three centipedes is down, not dead, but at least taken out of the fight for the moment. Our defenses however, as you can see, have also taken quite a beating. A few moments after that we have now switched back to the charge rifle. The last remaining centipede has also switched targets and is now firing at Cambia, but it barely gets off a single burst before being taken out for good. 
And with that, we have once again survived the encounter. We will deal with the aftermath in a short moment. For now, Cambia has more than earned himself a good meal, and then afterwards also a full round of rest. Fresh out of bed in the late afternoon, we then start the cleanup process, switching off turrets and hauling back centipede corpses. We have to keep in mind though that Cambia is still sick with two mechanoid infections, and so just like in the last episode his tiredness will increase pretty quickly, which is why we see him spend a lot of his time in bed. Before we continue with the rebuilding process, we also start cooking again. With five huskies in the colony, food efficiency is definitely a priority, so we will have Cambia cook a few simple meals here and then haul them up to the husky stables. And here you can see it again, the separation between normal simple meals and cannibal simple meals. This allows us to perfectly manage the food distribution, and it makes sure that Cambia remains the only one in the colony who consumes human meat. In the early morning hours then, a group of rare thrombos arrives on the ice sheet, but at this point I would honestly prefer to leave them alone. I don't really think we need another distraction at the moment. After a failed attempt to train the husky biscuit in hauling, Cambia then finally begins the repair work. As you can see, there is quite a bit of stuff to repair and rebuild, and with Cambia still getting tired very easily, it will likely take him a day or two to get everything back into a functioning state. After long hours of working and probably even longer hours of resting, we then have a nice surprise, as our female husky Ruby is once again pregnant. This is now her third pregnancy in her short time with the colony. However, I think at this point, we have more or less reached the limit of what we can sustain as a husky population. Even the two new husky puppies are putting a bit of a strain on our food reserves, and I admit my intention for this episode was to sell them off to some trader. Unfortunately though, so far, no one has stopped by. After a few more hours of work on the next morning, the defenses are then mostly rebuilt again. Cambia now hauls the last remaining centipede corpse into the storage room and begins the tedious process of rearming his traps. After a meal break and some rest, he proceeds with the traps that remain. His work is interrupted though by the arrival of a trade caravan. We are dealing with a combat supplier here, however with a tribal one, so they will likely not sell us any high-end weaponry or armor. Still, we might be able to sell them a few things. After all, we have a bit of unnecessary stuff lying around after the big tribal raid in the last episode. For now though, Cambia's work around the defenses is finally done. Everything is repaired, all traps are rearmed, and I would say we are now ready for whatever Randy Random decides to throw at us next. So let's continue in the spirit of this episode with even more cooking, as we turn the last remaining elk meat into simple meals for the huskies. For a change, the next few hours are then actually spent with research, at least until the trade caravan arrives at the base. At this point we send Cambia out to meet them, let's see if they have anything interesting to sell. Alright, it seems like Cambia is the one who does the selling in this one. We are getting rid of all the extra weapons we obtained in the last few raids. We will be keeping a superior great bow though. It's a pretty decent weapon with a high range. The selling price isn't all that high and who knows when we might need it. We are also getting rid of a few of our guns and we will also sell a single armor vest, but we will also keep a few just in case the one that Cambia is currently wearing breaks at any point. The whole trade here gets us just over 300 silver, not a whole lot, but definitely still worth it. On the next morning then, Cambia once again heads over to the research bench, as we have cargo pods coming in. The drop here contains 16 fire foam shells, thankfully though we have our huskies to haul those back, and out on the ice sheet the fire foam shell is also not all that useful. As the name suggests it is used to prevent the spreading of fires, but out here in the cold we have very little that actually burns, so unlike in the warmer biomes for example there is no risk of having a wildfire that spreads out of control. Now, at this point, I also had to make a very tough decision. I already mentioned several times that the five huskies are eating through our food reserves very rapidly, which is why we are now getting rid of the two youngest. I had hoped to be able to sell them, that didn't really work out so far, so there is, unfortunately, only one other way. 
So my apologies to Mikael and Lucky. On the bright side, however, on a very morbid one, we can now at least use the dead huskies to feed the ones who are still alive. So in the end, the cannibalism catches everyone out here on the ice sheet. The muffalo already wasn't spared and the huskies won't be either. As for Cambia's sickness, we are now stepping up the treatment process. Honestly, the whole thing is getting pretty annoying at this point. So instead of using no medicine to treat it, we are now at least using herbal medicine. That should hopefully speed up the recovery process. On the next morning then, it is time to finish what we started on the day before. The two dead huskies won't be of much use for us lying dead in the storage room. So one after the other, Cambia will now take them to the butcher's table. In total, this now produces 48 units of meat, which we are going to turn into simple meals immediately. And yes, I know that is a pretty cruel way to handle things, but I guess survival out on the ice sheet is not for the faint of heart. Rest and research then fills the remainder of the day, and we can see Cambia relax for a moment here, as very conveniently another trade caravan happens to arrive. Now this right here is a bulk goods trader, so they would not have been willing to buy the huskies either, so no need to regret the decision just yet. For future combat scenarios inside of the base, we are now also building ourselves a small shelf. This will be placed near to where Cambia normally takes cover, and we will use it to store our EMP grenades as well as the sniper and the charge rifle. On the shelf, they are now well protected from the elements, we wouldn't even need the roof overhead, and we also no longer have to go back inside of the base to switch weapons. After researching for another while, the trade caravan then arrives at the base, and so let's once again send Cambia out to meet them. We start things off by selling husky fur, snow hair leather and also a bit of human leather. We don't really need all of those and especially with the human leather we already have more than enough of it. We are also selling all of the dead men's clothing we have in our storage room and then we are also going to buy ourselves some food. All of this will be for the huskies and we start things off with 258 units of pemmican and we add to that a further 157 units of squirrel meat which combined with the 3 units of meat we still have makes a perfect 160. The whole trade runs us at a loss of 813 silver, but I would say that's worth it considering it allows us to keep the huskies alive for a long time. Speaking of the huskies, with everything hauled back into the base and Cambia also fully rested again, the husky training now continues, and we can see here Biscuit only needs two more successful training sessions until he also knows how to haul. Cambia is then also wasting no time turning the new meat reserves into simple meals, which will add a further 13 simple meals to our reserves. With the cooking taken care of, and also once again after taking a few hours of rest, Cambia now finally has time to spend a few undisturbed hours at the research bench, and those are enough to finally complete the hydroponics research project. This now allows us to build hydroponics and finally grow crops out here on the ice sheet, however I don't think we'll do any of that today. Getting the hydroponics up and running will require a fairly extensive building process. I'm still not quite sure whether or not I want to build them underneath the mountain or out in the open, so we will take care of that in the next episode. For today, we have two more small nice things that happen. Number one, with Cambia waking up here, we can see he has finally gotten rid of one of the mechanite infections. The second one is still active, but I hope that one vanishes soon as well. After preparing himself a few more cannibal meals, Cambia then also continues with the husky training, and with great success, as Biscuit has now also learned how to haul. With that, we now have three huskies capable of hauling. I have already reduced the priority of that task for Cambia himself. For the most part, the huskies should be more than able to take care of things. And with those two small successes, I think it's time we make the cut in today's episode. We have now reached the last day of spring out on the ice sheet. We have once again survived a big raid. And after making some tough decisions, the food situation is also no longer looking as bad as it did before. At this point, also a shout out to all of the new patrons Louis Aranas, Jared Keel, Dax Ram Gulam, Travis Kochi, Daniel Krala, Matthias Piokowski, Pinky, Griffin Jones, and Julian Renouf. Thank you all so much for your support. And should you ever be lucky enough to get naming rights for a husky, I hope it doesn't die in the very same episode. And with that, we wrap things up for today. As always, if you liked the episode, then leave a thumbs up. And if you want to support the channel, then you can either subscribe if you haven't already, or feel free to support the Pete Complete Patreon. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.
Tschüss.